which may not have striker Connor Wickham available for Saturday's game against Derby, but he is in top form at the moment at the European Under-17s Championships. Wickham scored a first-half hat-trick in yesterday's game against the hosts Azerbaijan, England winning four goals to nil. As for Wickham's Ipswich teammates, well, they remain confident of a first league win this weekend. Confidence-wise and, and, and self-belief and belief collectively uh, is fine. You know, we, we truly believe that the you know, there's a, there's a big run uh, just round the corner and uh, hopefully that starts Saturday. Meanwhile, music students from across Essex have been spending some of their half-term with members of the Parachute Regiment. Now, a Thanksgiving service was held at Norwich Cathedral today to celebrate the life of Lord Buxton, one of the founders of Anglia Television. Prince Philip was among the congregation remembering Lord Buxton, who was 91 when he died in September. Hundreds of people, including friends and former colleagues, attended the service, with many paying their own tributes to one of the independent television's most important figures. Well, in tonight's series on Anglia at 50, Natalie Gray has actually been looking at survival, the wildlife series set up by Lord Buxton that became famous around the world as it was sold to more than 100 different countries. And as well as the success of that programme, Natalie also asked if Anglia itself can survive in these challenging times for commercial television. This is the first ever survival programme broadcast in February 1961. The presenter is Aubrey Buxton, not just one of Anglia's founding fathers, but a man who was passionate about wildlife. Good evening. Nature itself is not so friendly. In fact, it's a constant struggle to survive. Take that fox. Foxes are often seen pillaging in dustbins around Hampstead Heath. From London's wildlife, the survival brand became one of broadcasting's biggest exports and a household name. 120 countries bought the programme. The flight of the snow geese made in 1973 chronicled the Arctic migration of Canada's most graceful bird. But how on earth was it filmed? Survival producer Mike Lindley let me into a secret. Flight of the Snow Geese was a film made by Des and Jen Bartlett. And what Des did, he went round and he, he collected the eggs from abandoned nests. And with geese and ducks and many birds, the first thing they see when they hatch, they call mum. And they re respond to you as mum. So the first thing these geese saw when they came out of the egg was Des. And he taught them how to fly, how to feed. And everywhere he went, they went. So when he was whizzing along the back of a truck through the desert at 40 miles an hour, these geese were flying like mad to keep up with him. And he was able to sit on the back with his camera and get wonderful slow motion shots of these geese flying along with the mountains whizzing by in the background. It was remarkable and it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a technique that's still used today, 35 years later. Survival's moving story, simply entitled Gorilla, told the tale of an attempt to reintroduce an orphaned baby back into the wild. The suspense grew to breaking point as Casimir, a huge male silverback, was determined to claim the youngster. And here we are. Conservationist and broadcaster David Bellamy made two specials and a series of his own with the survival team. All clear across the world there are now people who have been inspired by Attenborough, inspired by Peter Scott, inspired by Anglia, to actually care about it. You can't get better than that. But what about the survival of Anglia television itself? Fifty years ago, the former cattle market had been transformed into ITV's exciting new station. It was one of Norwich's biggest employers. Today, Anglia's output bears little resemblance to its past. OK, its regional news is amongst the highest rating on ITV. It produces more programmes for the harder-to-crack American market than virtually any other European producer. And it makes hundreds of commercials. But what happened to all the dramas, the quiz shows and the wildlife documentaries? 
Well, Anglia is currently shooting three one-hour survival specials with Ray Mears for ITV. As for the rest, here's one opinion. Glory days in, in replicating what they did in the past, totally gone forever. Of that, there's no doubt. And it's not really anybody's fault. Anglia was able to do that. Anglia was part of a 15-strong regional network of ITV when ITV's competition was Channel 4, the BBC, and then 5, terrestrial television. Once you've got 400 channels to compete with, those, that structure is completely unviable. And um, I believe ITV uh, indeed will survive. I believe network television sur will survive, but it'll be a centralised system um, which won't um, be able to afford the luxuries of local and regional programming to the extent that it once did. But regional director Neil Thompson is more positive. Will Anglia be around in another five years, let alone another 50 years? In five years' time, many of the people I'm privileged to work with now will be working on a regional news service in this part of the world. I hope it has Anglia as part of its brand. I hope it has Anglia on its sleeve as well as on its heart, or in its heart. Um, I can't guarantee that brand will be there, but I, I can be pretty certain that many of the people that I am privileged to work with now will be working as part of that. So, after 50 glorious years, what does the future hold? Uncharted waters, certainly, but with Anglia's tradition of rising to the occasion, anything is possible. Natalie Gray, Anglia News. <laughs> Well, more wonderful stuff there. We've had a great response from you over Natalie's Anglia at 50 reports. All very different. But let's uh, start with a question from one viewer, um, Cliff Flodgell, who remembers a signature tune called Wheels but can't recall what the programme it was for. <laughs> can you help, please, Cliff asked. Well, indeed, we can, Cliff. I'm sure plenty of you do know the answer to this one. The programme in question is, of course, that Anglia classic Bygones presented by Dick Joyce. Hope that helps you, Cliff. Anyway. Yeah, we've also heard from uh, Ron Ward, who's from Peterborough, who remembers the intimacy of the early days of Anglia, which, of course, we hope continues to this very day. Ron apparently used to fly gliders uh, with his pals and he emailed this classic account of how Anglia's legendary weather forecaster, Michael Hunt, apparently used to prompt us on TV if there was a good thermal day in the offing which meant a good day f to fly. So uh, thanks for that, Ron. Yeah, and thanks to all of you who have written in to us. Right, here's what to expect on the national news in just a couple of minutes from now. On the evening news tonight, we have... Well, that's, of course, coming up. I can't believe how warm it's been today. I was driving in 17 degrees. That's why you've got your arms up. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Just making the most of it before it gets chilly. Here's Amanda, though, with the weather forecast.